Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. The history of jail audio can be traced back to the mid-1970s when high school buddies Jim Birch and Lou Prony started a company together. J from Jim, L from Lou. I lost JL Audio. Speaker Warehouse was where JL originated. Here is the 1984 Toyota Celica by Manville Smith that had eight 8W2 JL Audio subwoofers in isobaric configuration, along with precision power amplifiers. So then JL decided, hey, let's get into the amplifier business ourselves around 2000. Here we show some assembly picks, and one of the first amplifiers was the 500 slash one. This became the best-selling car audio amplifier ever in the U.S. market. It was manufactured between 2000 and 2014, so it had quite a run. So let's check it out in the car audio and electronics. We have a 2004 directory here, and we're going to check out the specs and the prices and all that stuff. So let's take a closer look here at the price. Yeah, 600 bucks for a 500 watt amp. That's about what amps went for back then, a dollar per watt. The dimensions of the JL500-1 are 340 millimeters or 13.4 inches long by 9.25 or 235 millimeters wide by 2.36 or 60 millimeters tall. Here we'll check the specifications of the 500-1. You can see 500 watts RMS times one, anywhere between 1.5 and 4 ohms and between 11 and 14.5 volts. What's up with that? Well, it has a lot to do with the RIPS power supply, Regulated Intelligent Power Supply Technology. A lot of mumbo jumbo here. You can read about this in the video description below or just realize it keeps a constant power anywhere between 1.5 and 4 ohms and between 11 and 14 and a half volts. Next up, we'll check out the inputs and outputs. We have four gauge power and ground inputs. We have RCA line level preamp outputs with adjustable crossovers, filters, low pass, high pass, etc. In addition, we have an infrasonic filter. You can adjust bass controls here. There was a remote bass control available as well that did not come with the amplifier. In addition, we have the low pass filter. You can set the slope and the frequency and then the RCA inputs, you can adjust the voltage, the input, signal sensing off or on, and also you have the outputs for the subwoofer, except being 8 gauge wire. All right, now into the part most of you guys want to see, the amplifier dyno test. We're going to start off with the 4 ohm test, certified, and notice our voltage. We started kind of low, we wanted to end around 12 and a half volts or so. And check this out. Yes, this regulated power supply works. 582 watts at 4 ohms at 12.49 volts. So if you don't have the voltage, this is the kind of amplifier that you need. Pulled 76.5 amps. All right, next up we're going to try 2 ohms. Again, certified 40 hertz up to 1% THD. 571 watts at even less voltage, 12.33. Again, showing the benefits of that regulation circuit. 83.8 amps of current drone. Now we don't have a 1.5 ohm mode, but we do have a 1.6 ohm mode on the dyno. So let's try that up to 1% THD at 40 hertz. And yeah, boy. 655 watts at 12.32 volts. Pulling a little bit more current this time, 105 amps. Now there are some drawbacks to the regulated amplifiers, mainly the dynamic test since the regulation circuit will clamp down, will not allow the amplifier to produce huge dynamic numbers. You can see here 687 watts at 12.84 volts. And the current draw here was taken using the Fluke's inrush current mode, 141 amps. All 
All right, so now we've seen the amp test. Let's check out the guts. First, we're gonna take off this end plate. Oh, wait a minute. I think I just realized something. I didn't really need to take this off. You big dummy. All right, so here's the beefy guts of the 500 slash one. Doesn't really appear to be a 500 watt amp here. There's a lot going on. Daughter board at the bottom there has a lot of components for crossovers, etc. You can see this is a revision three, probably around 2005 or so version of the amp. There's quite a few different things going on here on the inside. I'm gonna show you a graphic here and explain some of the different parts. First off, you're gonna see on the far right, we have the power supply transformer. On the far left, we have the output inductor. And in the center, we have the regulation transformer. And just to the right of that, we have another inductor. Here are the results of the 500 slash one. You can see it exceeded its ratings in all tests. And very cool the way it got very close between four ohms and 1.6 ohms. Thanks as always for watching this video. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe, smash me a thumbs up, leave a comment below, let me know what you think about this amp, and share the video with your car audio aficionado friends, and we'll throw you some kicker flex here. We have all kind of cool videos here on my channel, such as the JBL A6000, Rockford Fosgate Power 1000 MOSFET. Make sure you subscribe. This is Big D Wiz, OldSchoolStereo.com. Until next time. I'm out of here. See that? Yeah. That's the way to do it. That's old school. Yeah? <laughs> no school like the old school. Uh. All right, thanks for those of you who hung around to the end. I usually like to throw some extra content up here at the end. I wanted to show this amplifier with a higher voltage to see if it made any difference because it's not supposed to due to the regulation circuit. You can see here, no, it did it exactly, well, within just a few watts at 1.6 ohms, 664 at 14.5, pulled 95.8 amps. You know, the only problem we got with the Cadillac, though, And all the equipment in rocket science here is which? All the equipment consists of precision power, street wire, con cord, and mobile cord. Either or. Back up here. Unbelievable. That is great. Now let me get a close up here. I get the go off the front. Okay. All the wiring, and these are the speaker cavity. That's <laughs>